What is up, peasants? My name is JB, and I'm here today with my Season 2 Draft Analysis for the PCL, or Pokemon Champions League. For those of you who can uh, remember back to Season 1, we were the runner-up, so unfortunately we did end up losing in the finals. But, you know, hopefully we can redeem ourselves here in Season 2 and uh, get that championship. That would be quite uh, lovely. And as you may or may not have noticed, I do have a new logo. I am now the coach of the Arkansas Razorwinds. I decided to finally go ahead and get, like, an actual logo commission so shout out to Kressel Key. uh her twitter and youtube will be in the description if i remember uh if i don't they definitely will be after i edit this so yeah go check her out uh if you need gfx on she makes some pretty cool logos so yeah definitely definitely go check her out and before we get into the team i want to give a shout out to those of you who came out to the draft stream i was a co-host for that so thank you guys for checking that stream out it was a lot of fun and anyway, let's go ahead and get into the squad, shall we? Uh, so, this season in the PCL, we extended from 12 coaches to 16, and I unfortunately, slash very fortunately in my opinion, got stuck with the 15th pick out of 16 coaches. I love myself a wheel pick, so I was perfectly okay with that when I saw it. I was like, you know, obviously, rather be you know top three, but if you can't be top three, I definitely, definitely want to be bottom three, because being in the middle sucks no one wants to be in the middle definitely want to be a wheel pick so I was perfectly fine with being 15 so knowing that I decided to actually go ahead and plan a bit more of like a full-on draft than I usually would like I usually you know just sort of go with the flow in drafts and sometimes it works out sometimes it bites me in the butt so I decided to actually go ahead and make like a full-on plan and wouldn't you know it <laughs> it didn't exactly work out and uh, honestly, I think I ended up with a better team than what I had originally planned. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So 15 picks go by and I was like, wait a minute, why the hell is this thing still available? I noticed it at like pick nine or 10, like wait, if this thing's still there, screw the plan, I'm taking it, I'm not overthinking it. So with the 15th pick, I was able to grab Landorus Therian somehow. Um, at 15 picks, uh, this thing was still there, and I didn't think about it. I'm like, wait, Lando T is available. I'm gonna just take Lando T, and that's what I did. So we have Lando, we have it on the squad. Uh, for those of you who've played competitive Pokemon at all in the last two, three years, you know exactly what Lando T does. Uh, it's like probably the most versatile Mon, just in general. Like it's just an incredibly versatile Mon. I, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. It's a freaking Landorus. Intimidated is a mate. Intimidate is an amazing ability. I don't know how to talk either. Um, ground flying type very solid. Fortunately, no, it does have the times for a weakness to eyes, but that, you know, that's something we could patch up because this thing is just too good to you know care about that. Um, like it just it's too good to worry about having a times for eyes weakness and everything else. So uh, stat wise, just incredible as well. 89 HP, very solid. 145 physical attack is fucking ridiculous. 90 in defense, 105 special attack, very, very usable, 80 spin up, very solid, and 91 speed, very good as well. Um, move pool wise, like I said, it's one of the most versatile Pokemon you can find. Um, access to Defog nowadays, Earthquake and Earth Power for Stab, uh, gets both Calm Mind and Bulk Up for Setup. You also get access to Sword Stance and Rock Polish for Setup, uh, so a ton of Setup options. Coverage wise, it gets a lot of decent stuff, uh, a lot of really good stuff as well. Uh, explosions, nice to have, Extra Sensory, Psychic. Uh, even Grass Knot, Hammer Arm for fighting coverage, good knockoff user, uh, Stone Edge of course, U-Turn, very spammable move, like, all in all, Landorus is one of the most hard-hitting, versatile Pokemon you can find, and it was just a no-brainer to pick it up, like, when it was, when I saw it was still available at pick 15, so, I, I didn't question it, I just took Lando T. <laughs> anyway, next up, uh, I decided to go ahead and reach a little bit and go ahead and grab Zero Aura. Uh, a few reasons for this, one... Uh, I knew there was no way it would get back to me on the wheel, so I, I knew it was not getting back to me. I know for a fact there were two coaches who wanted it, so I just decided to go ahead and grab it, as it fit the plan I had uh, better. It fit the plan I had really well. Uh, I wanted Mega Gyarados plus Tornadus T. Uh, obviously, once I got Lando T, Tornadus T was like not needed, uh, so I just still wanted to grab a good Volt Absorb Mon for Mega Gyarados, and uh, so that was still, you know, still sort of the plan was to you know, go ahead and grab. Mega Gyarados, so I wanted Volt Absorb Mon for that, and I honestly, I just, I just wanted to use Zero Aura, so I decided to grab the new toy, and grab Zero Aura. 143 speed is the first thing you will notice about this, incredibly fast, um, 
The only Pokemon faster than it uh, that were drafted, I believe, are Deoxys Speed and Ninjask. I don't think um, Mega Alakazam or Mega Aerodactyl were drafted. Mega Beedrill was drafted, so there's, there's, there's only three things faster than it that were drafted, so that's really cool. Uh, and I'm not even sure if I have to play any of those teams, but if I do, then oh well. But uh, other than that, it's one of the fastest mods that was drafted, and so in most cases, uh, you're not even going to have to run max speed on it, so that actually makes its mediocre bulk a little bit better. You know, 88 HP, 75, physical defense, 80 speed F, you know, they're solid on its own, but since you're oftentimes not going to be able to run max speed, you're able to, you know, chuck a little bit in HP to take some, like, random neutral hits, like, I don't know, random flamethrowers or random knockoffs or whatever. Uh, with its 112 physical attack and special attack, both very usable offensive stats, uh, so it's very nice to have. Uh, another wild move Pokemon, so I decided to go ahead and make it a Z user. Ah, honestly, uh, hindsight and, you know, clarity and the rest of my team notwithstanding, kinda not so sure how I feel about this thing being a Z user, but I can change that if need be. But for now, it is one of my Z users. Uh, it was a standard GBA style, uh, G thing. Uh, GBA style Z user thing where you pair a tier 1 with a tier 5, tier 2 with a tier 4, or two tier 3s. Uh, that's how that went, so Zero or being a tier 2, I had to pair it with a tier 4, which we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, Mufal wise, this thing just has a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, access to stuff like you know, brick break, close combat, drain punch, a lot of fighting coverage. This thing was part. This thing was electric fighting. Oh my god, it would be so much better. But um, of course, you know, discharge is a nice move. Fake out's a nice move to have. Access to fire punch, grass knot, hidden power ice. Uh, it's another good knockoff user. Low kick's a nice move to have. Signature move, plasma fist. So if your opponent uses a normal type move that turn, it actually. Uh, turns into electric type move and heals your zero aura, so that's very nice. Quick attack is cool for priority. Very fast taunt user. You guys know I love myself some fast taunt, and then just electric stab out the wazoo. The two knocks this thing, you know, genuinely gets is that it can't deal with ground types very well. Well, one, it's a fucking electric type. It's not supposed to be able to deal with grass or ground types very well. But you know, it does have access to grass knot, and it does rely a lot on hidden power ice. Unfortunately, this thing does not get ice punch. Really wish it did. I also really wish it got U turn. So this is like the big things it doesn't. Get that are kind of a knock on it but i'm not too worried about it it's still gonna be a ton of fun to use and i'm really excited to have it on the squad next up uh the fairy i wanted got sniped uh i wanted you know a nine tails a lola nine tails to go with uh, my mega gyarados because that just sounded ridiculously fun fortunately didn't get it so i had to you know go ahead and settle for some other fairy this this tapu lele thing i hear it's pretty good i don't play a lot of ladder but i, I hear tapu lele is pretty pretty damn good I'm kidding. Uh, Tapu Lele is obviously Tapu Lele is obviously an incredible one. Uh, it is an S tier mod, so for those of you wondering why I didn't see Tapu Lele, uh, I can't. You can't see um, S tiers. Also, I just decided I didn't want to. The main reason I guess I should probably talk about it a little bit. The main reason I didn't Z, put Z moves on Lando T is I didn't really feel like my a single tier five bond really benefited from them at all. Whereas the tier four mod I went with. Uh, <laughs> Can do some fun stuff with Z moves, so that's why I then decided to put Z moves on Lando. Was it didn't pair the, the Z capabilities on my tier five mod didn't really matter. So anyway, uh, moving getting back to Tabu Lele. Um, <laughs> uh, Tabu Lele in round three is a bit ridiculous that it was still available. Um, both Gardevoir forms had went, and like some other like random like other fairies and psychic types had gone. So it was a little bit weird that Tabu Lele somehow made it to me, but it did. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, incredible, incredible stats all around. Uh, 70 HP, 85 physical attack, 75 defense. Pretty meh, pretty okay, if I'm being honest. But the other three stats, oh my god. Uh, 130 special attack is absolutely ridiculous. 115 speed F, 95 speed. A special attack only gets better when you pair it with its ability. Psychic surge, summoning psychic terrain, making the stab psychic hit uh stab psychic moves hit incredibly hard you know your psychics your side shocks your extra sensories if you're trying to flinch someone uh but yeah top of is just freaking ridiculous man and uh yeah it's just such a hard hitting mon i also you know don't have to really worry about priority moves like i don't have to worry about bullet punches from crap like mega metagross if i end up having to play that at some point or you know just any mega sizzles bullet punches like i don't have to worry about bullet punch taking away one of this thing's main checks so that's pretty cool Fortunately, I can't really use priority, but my, you know, I planned around that. My team doesn't have a whole lot of priority, and plus, you know, Terrain's not going to be up the whole time. Uh, but yeah, Tapu Lele is an incredibly hard-hitting special attacker. Uh, it does have access to Aromatherapy, which is uh, something worth noting, because it is our only cleric option on this team. Spoiler alert, that's a little bit of a 
a little bit worrisome, but eh, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, another great Calm Mind user. Uh, Dazzling Gleam for Stab, if you need to click that for over Moonblast. There's literally no reason to bring that over Moonblast in singles. I don't know why I said that. Energy Ball, Extra Sensory, like I said, if you're trying to flinch stuff. Focus Blast, Grass Knot, if that hits harder than Energy Ball in a specific matchup. Magic Coat's a nice move to have dual screens. Nature, uh, Nature's Madness, Psychic and Psy Shock, of course, just hit incredibly hard in terrain. Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt as well. It's another good taunt user. The one thing I will say, it's speed tiers are pretty close to uh, Atlanta T, 95, 91, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm not too worried about my speed tiers when my team hits as hard, absolutely hits as hard as it does. My team just hits so damn hard, I'm not too, too worried about speed tiers at this point. But anyway, moving on to our next mod, I, uh, you know, decided to just go ahead and uh, <laughs> just get a little bit less weak to ground and pair Tapu Lele with a pretty damn good dragon type, start filling out that uh, Fairy Dragon Steel Core. And I managed to get my hands on Hadrian on to pair with Tapu Lele, which, oh my god, and also get myself another ground immunity in Levitate, so Zero Auras down doesn't have to worry about those random earthquakes. It's just, oh my god, getting this thing just fits so well with the team, and uh, just another mod that has just unbelievable stats. Honestly, I'm a little bit. <clears throat> this is the mod I kind of wish I had put Z moves on instead of Zero Aura, but like I said, uh, I can change that once during the season and I would not be surprised if I end up doing that sooner rather than later because uh, Zero Aura just hits really hard and doesn't necessarily need Z moves neither does uh, this thing, neither does Hydreigon per se but I just feel like Hydreigon can get a little bit more use out of it than Zero Aura could so I wouldn't be surprised if I end up changing that, uh, changing Z users sooner rather than later. Uh, they're both tier 2 so they'd still be paired with my tier 4 mod so don't have to worry about that we can, we can still get our tier 4 memes on when we need to. But anyway, stat wise, um, of course, I would fuck up. Uh, <laughs> I would fuck up at least one uh, stat. That's yeah. It wouldn't be a JB Westside draft analysis if one of the stats wasn't fucked up. That's meant to be 125 special attack instead of 115, but you know it is what it is. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> uh, anyway, getting back to Hydreigon stats: 92 HP, 90s in both defenses. So very solid, good bulk. Uh, 105 physical attack is very usable, and the 98 speed again, pretty close to Lele and. Uh, Lando T, but like I said, I'm not too worried about it when my team just <laughs> hits so effing hard. Uh, Hadrangon is just another incredible uh, move home on. It just has ridiculous coverage. I will keep hammering it home until the day I die. I love bonds that have a ton of coverage, and my team has ridiculous coverage. Um, <sighs> move pull wise, Hadrangon gets like stuff like Aquatel, uh, Body Slam, Crunch, and Dark Pulse for Dark Stab. It's another defog option. Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, Dragon Tail. Unfortunately, no access to Dragon Dance. Really wish it got that, because that would be a ton of fun. Uh, Earth Power, Earthquake can you know do whatever it needs to do there. Fire Fang, Fire Blast, Flamethrower. A lot of fire coverage. Flash Cannon, Focus Blast gets Head Smash as well. Uh, good Hidden Power user if need be. Hit him, uh, Happer Voice as well. The Ice Fang doesn't get Ice Beam. Wish it did. That'd be cool. Outrage if you're running a physical set. It gets Roost if you're running. Uh, if you need Roost for whatever reason, uh, just nice to have that. Rock Slide Stone Edge, Signal Beam is a nice move, Superpower as well, Surf for uh, special water coverage, another Taunt user, it's a good Stall Breaker, uh, I am actually a pretty big fan of Stall Breaker, Hydreigon, Taunt, Roost, and coverage moves, uh, Thunder Wave as well is a very nice move to have, uh, Tri Attack's cool, U-Turn, and get some cool stuff down yonder that would probably make it a pretty good Z user, so like I said, wouldn't be surprised if this thing ends up becoming a Z user sooner rather than later. Moving on, I wanted to go ahead and round out my uh, fire or fairy dragon steel core because you know those stinking cores are important, man. If you don't have your cores, you can't you can't have a good team. If you don't have if you don't have your damn cores, but more honestly, um, I didn't really know what steel type I wanted like at all, and conversely, I didn't know what water type I wanted at all. None of them looked like appealing to use since I wasn't grabbing Mega Gyarados at this point. I decided against it after I got Lele plus Hydreigon. Just at that point, I'm like, yeah, uh, Gyarados doesn't really fit this team anymore. But, you know, Lele Hydreigon is too good to pass up on. So I was like, wow, I just, I don't even know what water type I would want. Because at this point, stuff like Primarina, Melodic, and all that sort of, your typical water types are gone. So I was just like, well, hmm. Don't know what water type I want. Don't know what still type I want. Wait. One of my favorite Pokemon is Water Steel type, Empoleon. I love Empoleon. Uh, 
Legit though, uh, Empoleon is one of my favorite Pokemon design wise. All the Gen 4 starters are like three of my favorite Pokemon. Less so Infernape. Uh, I like Infernape, but like I'm just talking like strictly design wise. Uh, Empoleon and Torterra are like top 10 easily. Uh, Torterra is like top 3. Empoleon's like top 6, probably. I don't, I don't fucking know. Maybe I'll make that top 10 list. You guys want to know my top 10 favorite Pokemon? Let me know. I might make that video. I don't know why. But yeah, I fucking love penguins and Empoleon is super cool. I've wanted to use it forever and I finally got my hands on it because it fits the team. So yeah, no reason to... There wasn't a reason not to take it, so I took it. Uh, it's just, I guess, uh, one of my favorite mons design. Why is it a mon I've wanted to try in the format for a while? Very, very versatile uh, stat-wise. It can do a lot of cool things. can run a lot of cool sets. Um, stat-wise... Good, not great, all around. 84 HP, 86 physical attack is surprisingly usable. 88 Fizz Def is solid. 111 special attack, very good. Uh, even when you're not invested, uh, it's still gonna hit relatively hard with like Scalds or Ice Beams or what have you. Uh, 101 Spit F, very solid as well. 60 speed is pretty trash, but you know, I can outspeed a lot of, you know, slower, bulky things. So, Space 60 speed is a decent mid speed tier. I can live with that. Uh, ability wise, you know, Torrent. Uh, good ability defiant is very good if you're running, you know, the random physical Empoleon because let's be honest, I'll probably do that at some point. I am a crazy person after all. Uh, loop pull wise, a lot of fun stuff. It's a very good defogger. Some would say the best defogger. Uh, I know I'm gonna get shit for that because you know some people don't like that meme, but I, I like pissing people off, so it's the best defogger. Um, <laughs> also a stealth rock option, so that helps take pressure off Linda T. Uh, it gets a lot of cool stuff, like, it uh, gets agility if you are running, like, a, you know, more offensive set, which it can very easily do. Aqua Jet for priority. Uh, it gets Earthquake, Flash Cannon, Grass Knot, Knock Off, uh, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Liquidation if you're running the physical set. Rock Slide, Signal Beam, Shadow Claw, of course, Scald, Toxics. You get Sword Stance if you, again, are running the setup. Physical set, so yeah, a lot of cool things that Napoleon does. Should be a ton of fun to use, I'm very excited to finally have it on the squad. Moving on to our next pick, I wanted to, you know, start evening out my speed tiers because it kind of just went from freaking <laughs> Zero Aura all the way down to Hydreigon and nothing in between. So I wanted to start filling out some stuff in between and I ended up grabbing Mian Shao. Mian Shao is another personal favorite of mine. I really like this thing. It's really fun to use in League format. It gets a lot of really cool stuff and it just, it, it's a mon that forces prep because if you don't have something to switch into high jump kick, you're probably gonna lose to high jump kick. Because let's be honest, it's a pretty hard hitting move if you hit, uh, and I don't miss. Anyway, <laughs> stat wise, pretty piss poor defenses, but that's not the, you know, the selling point of this. 60 HP, 60s in both uh, defenses, 125 special attack, or physical attack that was phenomenal, 105 speed, like I said, evening out the speed tiers, and then 95 special attack is very usable. You can splash red him, hit him powers on this, and they'll do some decent damage if your opponent is not prepared. So that's pretty cool. Uh, move pool wise, uh, Aura Sphere is a nice move to have. Baton Pass is cool. Uh, gets bulk up and call mine. Drain Punch for secondary fighting stab outside of high jump kick, because unfortunately this thing does not get access to close combat. That's the move I'm looking for. Another good knockoff spammer. Uh, low kick is a very nice move to have for those stupidly fat things. Poison jab for the stupid fairies. Uh, it's another fast taunt user. Gets stone edge for coverage and then U-turn as well. It's another nice U-turn mod. A lot of U-turn on the squad. More than I had realized. Um, ability wise, regenerator, reckless, both solid. Inner focus also decent, but um, not too worried about that. But it's you know cool to have. And like I said, reckless. Uh, high jump kicks just do a ton and then. If you're running more annoying pivoty set regenerator is also very very nice to have. Next up, uh, I decided to go ahead and grab the mon that I uh, you know I'd planned on taking for a while, and I you know was let me let me restart that story. I knew I wanted this mon, but I didn't want to take it this round. Reason being is who takes round seven Omastar. Well, I got sniped multiple times on the normal type I wanted so I'm like well shit let me just keep the draft moving because I'm not an asshole so I just grabbed the next thing I wanted on my list and that was Omastar which is tier 4 and our other Z move user so yeah dude we gotta see Omastar should be a ton of fun right um <clears throat> yeah <laughs> it actually will be a ton of fun uh there's a lot of cool things that this thing can do but the main reason we drafted Omastar is I wanted some freaking hazard stacking options on this team uh, this thing gets access to Stealth Rock, further taking 
uh, pressure off of uh, Empoleon plus Lando T. Uh, but it also gets access to spikes and toxic spikes, which are very, very nice to have. Very appreciated. Uh, and I want, I want hazards, so I'll grab my boy. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you know, you look at Omastar and you think, Shelf Smash, which is definitely something it can do, because let's be real, uh, what wants to switch into, you know, the Shelf Smash ones? Shelf Smash ones just win games sometimes. Sometimes you just click Shelf Smash and win. Will I ever do that? Probably not because that's a bitch set. That's so basic. I don't do that. But to also be honest, yeah, I'll probably do that at some point. <laughs> yeah, Shell Smash, like I said, uh, just a nice setup move. Uh, move wise, it doesn't get a whole hell of a lot, but it gets hazards, like I mentioned. It gets Earth Power for coverage, haste to prevent setup if you're running a bulkier set. It's another knockoff user. Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, uh, Rock Blast, Rock Slide. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't get the best Rock Stab. The only rock, special Rock Stab it gets are Ancient Power and HP Rock, so not the best there, but eh. It gets Shell Smash, it gets Hazards, and it gets uh, <coughs> Reflect Type. Uh, what? I didn't say anything, but um, yeah, it gets Reflect Type, <laughs> which I'm sure I will run at some point. Z Reflect Type. Coming your way. Hey, next up, um, I needed a another fire immunity or fire resist slash I wanted to ghost type so I decided to bring back Chandler. Chandler was on the squad last season and was one of my kill leaders and it's just a really 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 good mon. I love Chandler. One of the harder hitting you know special uh mons in the format and it's yeah it's dual stabs really fit the team and yeah it's, it's Chandler. Stat wise 60 HP 90 in both defense is very solid. 55 attack is trash but you're not running for physical attack. 80 speed is very usable, uh, especially with flame charge, so that's pretty cool. And then 145 special attack at, special attack is absolutely phenomenal. Ability-wise, flash fire, flame body, and infiltrator all have their uses. Uh, mostly though, flash fire and infiltrator. If you can get flame body to work, it's pretty cool, but it's RNG, but eh, 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 eh. If you get it to work, it's great. If not, then oh, it's just kind of a useless ability, but yeah, that's whatever. Move pool wise, hits really hard, stuff like, uh, you know, it's a Calm Mind user, Clear Smog for setup, uh, to prevent setup rather, Dark Pulse and Energy Ball for coverage, uh, Fire Blast and Flamethrower if you don't, for Fire Stab, Flame Charge to boost speed, E Belt Flame Charge is the only set, for being real, uh, it gets access to Hex, so if I'm on Hex T Spikes, that could be pretty fun. Uh, Memento is a very nice move to have access to, Overheat to Nuka Mega Aggron because it does kill, uh, Psychic for coverage, Shadow Ball for stab, another Taunt user. Uh, it's a good uh, trick user for if you want to trick something, a uh, scarf or specs that, you know, just, with, just to get rid of something. It's another, you know, decent little list option. Gets some usable stuff like acid armor down low, but not a whole lot. But yeah, it's, it's a fun mod, and it fits the team, and I know how to use it relatively well for being me. <laughs> anyway, next up, I uh, decided to grab Claydol. Main reason being, I wanted a rapid spinner and a secondary ground type that wasn't times for weak to ice. So if I have to face a really scary ice type, I don't have to, you know, rely on Lando T being my only ground type. And also, it's another levitate uh, mod which helps out zero or even more. And yeah, so uh, very solid uh, addition to the team in terms of what it provides support-wise and taking pressure off of other mods. Like I said, rapid spin uh, to keep my spikes slash two spikes up for whenever I bring those or if I really don't want to defog or whatever if I just need rapid spin for one specific matchup I have a rapid spinner it's one of the main reasons I drafted it as well as the whole ground type thing uh, it's another decent move pull mon uh, good not great uh, it's another stealth arc option so helps out there earth power earthquake uh, dazzling gleam calm mind explosion grass not like funnily enough almost every mon on my team learns grass knot. I think there's only like three mons on my team that don't land grass knot so that's pretty cool uh ice beam is nice to have magico dual screens uh stab psychic and side shock of course rapid spin like i've mentioned three times already rock polish if you want to get really weird uh rock slide stone edge shadow ball signal beam it's another trick user if need be stat wise good not great 70 in both attack stats 75 speed is decent Bulk wise, HP is pretty trash, but uh, Biz Def is 105, very solid, 120 spit off, very good. So, yeah, pretty decent bulk, good move pool, provided a lot of support and needed rolls for the team. And I like the fit, so I decided to go ahead and grab it. Moving on to our next pick, I decided to go ahead and further, you know, fill out those speed tiers in between Zero Aura and the rest of the squad, and I have Swallow. So, if you watch the stream, this was Kalaster. 
But after the draft, I went ahead and changed it to Swallow because I fit the team better and it gave me a normal type. So yeah, we have Solo on the squad now. Honestly, not the biggest fan, but it fit what I needed on the team. It gave me a normal type and the speed, the 125 speed tier really helped. This thing is very predictable. That's what I don't like about it. It can't do very much. Uh, basically, after one turn of Swallow being in, you're going to know what set it is. It's either going to be Flame Warp Guts or it's going to be Specs Boom Burst. There really aren't any other options for this thing. Bulk wise, it's absolutely terrible. Uh, 60 HP, 60 defense, 50 speed F. Very bad. Uh, offensively, 85 attack is usable, especially if you're the gut set, so it can hit relatively hard from a physical side. Uh, special attack, base 75, not very good, especially when you uh, are relying on pretty much only boom burst at that point. Uh, hurricane misses, heat wave misses. And if you're running hidden power, then it's just honestly not going to do that much unless it's times four. Uh, super effective. Uh, Air Slash just doesn't do damage, so you kind of have to rely on Hurricane. It is another um, defog option, so if for whatever reason I really need fast defog, then cool. It does get Tailwind, which is nice. It does get Whirlwind, which I guess is okay. Uh, U-Turn is nice to have access to, of course, but I have a lot of U-Turn. Um, yeah, it... it it's a mod that can put in work, but it's just very predictable, which is something that I don't like personally. I'm not denying that it hits like an absolute truck with Guts Flame Orb facade, but yeah, I'm just it's it's very predictable. That's just that's just all there is to it. But anyway, I'm excited to have it. It fit the team and it's gonna do what I need it to do speed tier wise, and if it has a good matchup, hopefully it can come through then. And last, but certainly not least, you may or may not have noticed that I don't have my Mega yet. So what happened there was, after round three, half of the draft had their Megas. So what those of us who didn't have Megas did was we were like, hey, what are you taking? What are you taking? So we all just like asked around and we came to find out that no one was planning to snipe anyone else on Megas. So we just decided to wait till round 11 to take our Megas. So that's what we all did. And with my... Last pick of the draft, I decided to go ahead and grab Mega Venusaur because it's Mega Effing Venusaur and it, oh my god, I managed to end up with this thing. Uh, Mega Venusaur is probably top three in terms of like favorite Megas to use in the format. It's really, really, really good. Uh, 80s in HP and speed, 100 physical attack, very usable, 123 defense, very good, 122 special attack, very good even when you don't invest. And then 120 spadaf is just incredibly good as well. Uh, access to thick fat, making its weaknesses to ice and fire more like neutral hits, so that's cool. Uh, grass poison type, of course, uh, so absorbs those two spikes. Ground poison type is nice to have. Stupidly fat grass type is just, yeah, it's just stupidly fat. Uh, move pool wise, doesn't do a whole lot, but it gets what it needs. And what I mean by that is you're not going to find a whole lot of crazy stuff that Venusaur can do, but everything it does works. Uh, Body Slam is a nice move to have access to. Earthquake, of course. Energy Ball. Giga Drain. Uh, Energy Ball if you know you really need to KO. <laughs> um, and don't want to, you know, have to run Leaf Storm. Uh, Giga Drain, Grass Nod, if what, whatever. You have all the grass coverage you need, basically, depending on, you know, just whatever. It would do more damage. Another Knock Off Mon. Leaf Storm if you need to nuke something. Uh, Leech Seed is nice to have. Nature Power uh, does some cool things in terrain. I don't remember off the top of my head what it does in psychic terrain, but that's something I can look up. Uh, <laughs> Power Whip and Pedal Blizzard if you want to run a Sword Stance set because it gets Sword Stance, by the way. Fortunately, it doesn't get Poison Jab. That would be just way too nice. They, we can't have nice things, though, can we? Uh, or it's a good Roar Mon. Uh, it gets Rest if you need it. Uh, it gets Synthesis as well. Sludge Bomb for Stab. Toxics I don't miss. The one thing I will say, it is kind of rough that I have... Um, Psychic terrain with Mega Venusaur, so that's a little annoying. So I had to, you know, be careful. But I think I can play around that pretty well. I do have a very good Dark type to switch in, and uh, Lele itself doesn't really uh, mind taking psychic hits. So I do, I do have ways around that. It is a little annoying, but I'm not, I'm not too, too worried. Anyway, that is a squad, and honestly, I am really, really happy with how this team turned out. Uh, the one weak point I would say, it, the weak point, the main weak points rather. I should say our Swallow, uh, not the biggest fan personally, but it fits the team well and does what I need it to do. The other thing I don't really like are, is both of my water types are weak to ground. That's pretty rough, but I do have four ground immunity, so it sort of evens out, but it's, it is pretty annoying that both of my water types are weak to ground, so yeah, it is what it is. 
But all in all, I really, really like this team. And just to, you know, go over it one more time before the end of the video. Uh, the squad is Lander, Styrian, Zero Aura, Empoleon, Mian Shao, Omastar, Claydol, Tapu Lele, Hydreigon, Chandelure, Swallow, and of course Mega Venusaur. Very excited to use this squad. Should be a lot, a lot of fun. It's a very me team, and it's, like I said, should be a ton of fun to use. So if you are excited for this season of the PCL, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe. Uh, check out the description, all the other coaches, draft analysis, uh, <laughs> should have gone up, or should be going up uh, sometime this week. So, you know, be sure to go check everyone's out, and I will see you all week one, uh, should be, uh, later next week sometime next week i'll see y'all then i don't know how to end the videos thanks for watching guys peace out